and happy Friday. Um, I want to pull over here a little bit so I can see. And hey. oh, it's on the other side today. <laughs> Yay! All right. Oh, I'm just doing a little stretching while I wait for you guys to join. Check on the Facebook page. Let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, it is live. I can see it on Facebook. Hi, Anne. Yay. Oh, I can see so many more people when I'm looking at my phone. This is good. Thank you. Um, welcome. Oh, Joyce. Oh, man. I miss seeing you. I miss seeing you guys. This is so great. And Holly. Yay. I'm so happy that you found your way to your mat this morning and um, that this week has been good. Um, I today I'm going to focus a little on change and also on our ability to change and our ability to notice when we need to reach out. We want to be more connected or if we need support. Um, I think of people at home with uh, children, teenage children, and um, it made me uh, immediately think of delegate, delegate. <laughs> Try not to do everything yourselves. Give yourself time to um, have some space. So I also am grateful to Ease for offering these free classes and um, I think we are all learning about this Facebook Live situation and actually give me a thumbs up um, and let me know and maybe just if, if you can hear me okay. Um, I have been exploring spaces within my house where the internet is better and where I can hear you guys can hear me better so um, Anyway, I also wanted to offer to you or let you know that I will stay on for an hour and 15 minutes. So if you um, need to go early, that's fine. And then make sure that you um, maybe just give yourself a couple of minutes before you have to go for a little Shavasana um, or do it later. I can remember when my kids were little before um, on the days I didn't have carpool occasionally, I would just drop, 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 what do they call it? Um, drop, oh gosh, no, I'm forgetting. Anyway, I would lay down on the carpet in the living room and do Shavasana, even if it was for five minutes. It would, it was a mood and game changer. They would come in the door, I'd be like, ah, so happy to see you, as opposed to rushing from one thing to the next. So anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. And um, I have um, a quote that I saw yesterday. I, I drink these, um, Honest Teas, a little plug for Honest Tea, I love them. And uh, the on, I don't usually read the quote underneath, but I did yesterday and it says, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. And I thought, ooh, that's a good one. That's a keeper and a good reminder. Um, 
Hello, Sue and Tara's watching. And a shout out to my mom, who's my biggest fan and um, an incredible yogi. So I also wanted to, um, uh, like I was saying about the thanking ease for the free online classes, but I also wanted to remind you, you can go to the YouTube channel, Ease Yoga and Cafe, and also uh, subscribe and then see all of the videos that they've been doing since um, we have been in this situation. So there's lots of different offerings. So um, you can watch them anytime. I also was thinking about the sunset and the sunrise and how that is such a grounding force for me. And also that thought of change, they're never the same. I love to watch the sunrise in particular, um, usually in the summer when I'm on vacation. <laughs> and it's amazing how different it is every day. And we are different every day. Our bodies are different. Our mind is different. So um, that idea of letting the yoga meet you where you are is a beautiful uh, sentiment to remember. So I will. I think I'm going to just let you move on to your backs and I'll read you um, something else that I found this morning that uh, I think is relevant for today and the situation that we're in. So you can, again, come down onto your, bo um, onto your back, which is the way I usually start people. I think sometimes it's just easier to relax and connect with yourself when you're laying down as opposed to sitting up. Sometimes you have to figure out that comfortable place when you're sitting. So if you have a pillow, I found this pillow yesterday. Um, I hadn't really noticed it in a long time. And shout out to my dad who gave me this pillow. It says, hey, girl, this is your time to shine. And I was like, this is a perfect bolster. So put this underneath your knees. I'm going to put this underneath my knees. If you have a blanket, you can certainly do that or a couch pillow. It's nice to have a little cushion under your knees and then come down on your back nice and slow. And once you come down onto the back, maybe take your arms out up above you, keep the elbows bent and just take a breath in through the nose. Let it out through the mouth. <sighs> maybe you feel your arms start to slide with that exhale. Again, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Maybe rock the head a little side to side. Massage the back of the head, see the, how that feels on your neck. And with your legs, if you don't have something to tuck underneath, that's fine. You can widen the knees, you can shake your legs a little bit, shimmy the hips. Just kind of the, with the idea of moving into some stillness, coming to, into a space I like to call your, your mat or your space, like your own sacred spot. And then continue to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Or feel free to let it out through the mouth. That feels really good. You feel things moving slightly as you breathe. Just let that happen. Stay where you are. I'm going to demonstrate sometimes, and I'm also going to um, cue you as well while you're in the pose. So go ahead and stay there. And then just notice that whiff of air that comes in through the nose and out through the nose. There's this little tiny sensation above your lip. It's a cool breath coming in and a warm breath coming out. And we like to call this re relaxed, full, um, relaxed wakefulness. So we're not actually taking a nap. We're not expecting ourselves to become a, a complete noodle right away. It's a practice. And sometimes this posture and Shavasana can be the hardest. But if you can imagine that the breath is like an ocean wave and it's just gently moving within you, Inhaling, thinking about the crest of the wave, and then as you exhale, that beautiful ocean that comes up onto the shore. And it opens, and there's all this space that you see. And just letting that nice wave continue to flow. There's no right or wrong.
and maybe a little gratitude for that breath and reacquainting yourself with the fact that it's with you 24 hours a day, every second of your life. So you have that powerful tool to tap into, which can really be a nice tool to have in your toolbox right now with what we're dealing with as a global, as global people. And then maybe moving your hands to your belly, one palm on top of the other. And start to notice the breath. Maybe it's the belly. When the belly starts to fill, you feel the breath moving up into the palm. So inhalation, feel the fullness. Exhalation, feel that nice softening. There's no effort in the exhalation or the inhalation. Letting it flow naturally. And just noticing. Letting go of the busyness of your mind. The breath is a wonderful, powerful tool to soften, allowing you the permission to just let those thought, thoughts float away. You can always pick them up when you need them later. Or there may be some that you just want to float away and you, by the end of your practice, you feel lighter and you don't even remember them. Checking in with your physical body and just noticing any particular area maybe where as you breathe, you can imagine that the breath is moving and creating a little more space or a little less tension, a little less tightness. It can be around our chest and heart space. Maybe we've been holding and anxiety has been weighing on that space. And then if you'd like to, you can deepen the breath by counting your inhalation and your exhalation. So you can keep the hands where they are if it was more comfortable to have them to the sides, palms uh, facing up. And I'm sorry, I didn't say if you're closing your eyes, hopefully you've already closed your eyes, soften through the face. Or you can bring one hand to the heart and one hand to the belly. Just find a comfortable place where as you inhale, notice the fullness of the belly for one, up all the way through the diaphragm rib cage for two into the chest for three relax the shoulders in your exhalation and soften three two one again inhale feeling the belly rise up through the diaphragm the breath moves into the chest for three and then relax soften surrender three two one so take this at your own pace. It may be different for everyone. It may be shorter, it may be longer. And eventually it does as you open up and create more space where maybe you weren't fully alive yet, your breath will become longer and more open. But try not to over effort. Just use this as a practice. couple more times. Coming back to your natural breathing rhythm, or you can continue if you prefer. And then just noticing any physical sensations, sometimes by just lying down and trying to practice that release of control, expectations, you feel nice and heavy and grounded just with the weight of gravity. Sometimes people feel lighter that they, they can't even, they just don't even notice their fingers or their toes, or it's something different for you. So take your time, and just notice in a soft and compassionate way. And then I'm just gonna read you a little something from the Daily Alm. It says, let yourself be carried. The flow of the universe, it is in the blossoming of a flower born from a seed planted in the spring. 
the growth cycle that every human being goes through is part of this natural flow, which is also the current that takes us down life's path. When we move with it, rather than resisting, we are riding on the universal wave that allows us to flow with life. Many people live struggling against this current. They try to use force or resistance to will their lives into happening in a way they think it should. Others move with it like a sailor using the wind, trusting that the universe is taking them exactly where they need to be at all times. This flow is accessible to everyone because it travels through and around us. We are riding, we are always riding it. It's just a matter of whether we are willing to go with it or resist it. And then you can slowly maybe begin to rock your head a little side to side, wiggle your fingers and maybe your toes. Give yourself a nice big stretch with your arms up over the top of the head. You can keep your eyes closed. Actually closing your eyes really helps you become more um, aware, kind of brings the experience more inside. So it's up to you. See that we have Martha. Hello, Martha. Good to see you or imagine you. And then start slithering a little side to side. Dana Kelly and Benedict. Yay. So happy to see you guys are here and you're on your mats. Oh, something happened. All right, so start slithering a little side to side. So you're going to reach your arms up over the top of the head and stretch through the right heel as you reach back with the left, the right arm. And then switch side to side. Bend a little into the right knee. Stretch through the left leg. Let your elbows be soft as they move back and forth. All right, so this is really nice for pumping our lymphatic system. All those lymph nodes. You can also point the toe if you prefer. And you can make this as energetic as you'd like, or you can just sway a little side to side. You know, you're checking in with yourself and seeing what it is that you need today. Nice. And then open up like a Y or think like a starfish here. And then lift up your left hip as though you're just kind of bumping it a little over to the right. And then take the right one and then just let it drop. Go back and forth, let your legs completely off duty. Good. Take an inhale, reach through the fingers, stretch through the toes, relax the shoulders down, maybe a little tuck of the chin, bend into the elbows, and then come down to the sides. Take a little snow angel here, remember that? Oh, not that, I'm ex that I want it to snow anytime soon, but just take your feet in, arms come down, open up, and just maybe imagine that you're making a snow angel. Good. And then walk the feet onto the floor. Lift up the hips a little bit. Press into the, um, the feet. Maybe bring the ankles a little closer in towards the thighs. Arms can stay out to the side. And then just bump the hips to the right. Imagine that your hips are like a hammock. And you're just softly swaying them. Try not to push an over effort. Think about if you were in a hammock, how nicely you would like to be gliding back and forth not violently. A couple more times. If you want to reach your arms up over the top of the head, you can do that as well. Nice. All right. And then we're going to do some energetic things today. So this is gentle yoga, but I like, I think that um, giving us a little strength today um, as an option, you can always choose not to and modify, but we're going to do a little bit of strength poses here today. So we're going to reach, 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 push a little in the heels like one and then the other. You'll feel your shoulders coming up towards the ears. That's okay for now. Your palms are facing in towards one another. Hopefully you guys can see me. Take an inhale and an exhale and then start to bring your fingers up towards the ceiling. Your feet are still flexed. You're relaxing the back of the neck and then you're reaching the fingertips up towards the ceiling. Take a quick little peek and make sure that your feet are about hip width apart, or you can bring them closer if you'd like to. And then you're going to start to lower down. Now, you can imagine this is a little bit of a resistance here, and you can reach through those fingertips. Think of the crown of the head going behind you, the feet are going forward, <clears throat> or you can just float the hands down. And think now into Dasana pose. So a little press of the back of the head, tiny little lift of the chin. 
Your arms are hovering over the mat. Your fingers, you can spread them a little bit. And then imagine again, the fingers are going down towards the feet. The feet are flexed. The heels are pressing in towards the mat a little bit. And you may feel a little bit of heat being created here because you're pretty active. You don't want to feel this in your lower back. So make sure that you're, you can press a little with your buttocks, but not into your lower back. You should have that nice little curve there. Good. And then just release everything. Ah, very good. And then take the arms up over the top of the head again. Let's try it one more time. So you're reaching with your fingertips up, flexing through the feet. Maybe a little, little tiny connection of the heel down towards the mat, back of the head, little tiny lift of the chin. Keep reaching through the fingers as though someone is pulling on your fingertips come all the way down just hover reach through you're, you're using your shoulder blades to support you a little bit but try not to take all the weight there take an inhale exhale through the mouth and just let it go awesome all right and then next you're going to draw there's two options you can hold behind the knee keep the left leg long and just draw the knee in or you can Take your hands behind your head or to your ears. Let's say to the ears instead. Little tuck of the chin. Look at your, point the toes. You can even hover if you want to. Engage your core if you do that. Look at the toes, the left toes, and then switch. All right, so again, here, just bringing that knee in, getting a nice, you'll feel a little bit more stretch on the right thigh. Just letting that knee come in, maybe a stretch here. Keep it nice and soft, or option is to Point the toes. If you want, you can keep the toes or the knee, the leg at 45 degrees, and you can hover. That's a lot more energetic. Tuck the chin, and then lower down. And then go back and forth at your own pace. You can even mix it up. Maybe you switch it up. Do a couple without lifting the head, and then maybe you try to bring the knee in close, or you can hover. So this is a little bit um, of work and offering whether you feel you need to be a little more energetic or you need to be a little bit more kind. You can also stay up and do it. And then two more times on each side. Take your time and make sure you're breathing. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, you're exhaling as you take the contraction. Okay? And then everybody come down. Once you've done both sides, you can release the, the uh, legs, open up the arms to a T, take your right elbow underneath the left, give yourself a little hug here. If you find that your fingers are somewhere where you might want to massage, go for it, right? And then you can also rock a little side to side. Feel a nice massage on the upper back. Okay. Good. And then come back through the center. Open up the arms. This time take the left elbow underneath. Just let the hands fall where they go. Try not to force anything. It's especially crossing here too tight. You won't be able to breathe. And then you can rock a little side to side or use the fingers and give yourself a massage there. Really nice option. Make sure that you're breathing, you're inhaling and you're exhaling. Closing your eyes if you'd like. And then come back to the center. Take your arms down to the sides and we're gonna take a little um, banana or C curve uh, exercise here. So exercise, pose. So you're gonna walk your feet over towards the left, corner of the mat doesn't have to be all the way over to the corner, but, and then take your arms up, bend at the elbows. And then you're just going to start to slither a little over towards the left. So keep the elbows bent and notice what's going on on your right side, right? So you're just getting a nice stretch on your right side, but you don't want to force it. Our brains, our egos kind of tell us, oh, let's just keep going until we actually can't breathe anymore because that's the biggest expression of the pose, but we don't want to do that. We want to just ease into it. Once you're here, other options are you can hold on to your fingers, maybe just hold on to the 
uh, point your finger if you want to and see how that feels. If your chin is really tucked in, lift your head a little bit and move your head away from your uh, shoulder. So that's just an option or keep the arms and the hands away from each other and enjoy that. Last option is to take the bottom foot and set it on top of the top foot. Take a deep inhale in, exhale through the mouth. Uh, this time, notice where you feel the ease as you exhale. Inhale. Exhale through the mouth. I'm letting the body just move with the exhalation. Sometimes my arm starts to slide away. Perfect. And then I'm going to go with the flow of the universe. All right, so open up the arms. Walk yourself back to the center. Give yourself a moment in the middle. Maybe you can take a peek and see if you're... Um, lined up in the center and then start to walk the feet over towards the right move any props if you need to start to bend at the elbows bringing the arms up over towards the top of the head they don't have to go all the way towards the head just be mindful of your shoulders and then just start to take that right elbow and your shoulders a little over towards the right so if you go so far and you're um, arm is hanging in the air, then either move back towards the center a little bit so you can relax that arm, or you can try holding onto that finger, but you want to make sure that this opposite arm is not uncomfortable. And sometimes body parts hanging in the air is uncomfortable. You can lastly, you can take that top foot, excuse me, the bottom foot, and cross it over the top. If you want to try the other way, you can, but I think the bottom foot is basically best. And then relax the feet. Keep breathing, stay where you are. If you want to inhale through the nose and let it out through the mouth, you're not, we can't hear you, so breathe as loudly as you would like. Or in through the nose and out through the nose. As you inhale this time, take a full inhale and as you exhale, Notice, pay attention, where is the physical sensation? Is there somewhere where you're feeling a little bit more ease? When we stay in the poses and let the breath do the work, it's amazing how the body subtly will open. I wish I could keep you here for 10 more minutes, it would be lovely. All right, so come back through the center, bring yourself back. Check and make sure that you're in about the center of your mat. Reach your arms up over the top of the head. Give yourself a long stretch, maybe slither if that feels good to you. And maybe just notice, does it feel any different than when you first laid on your mat and started to do it? All right, and then you're gonna bend into the knees. Place the feet on the floor. Take a moment in constructive rest, so take your feet so that they're towards the outer edges of the mat and then just let your knees fall towards one another. Relaxing on your back. If you wanna place the hands on the belly, if that feels good, or arms to the sides, or you can even take them out to the sides. Try not to take them over the top of the head. Just if your back is uncomfortable today or if you have um, any back challenges, you know, tightness and tension usually, just take your hands to the sides with the palms facing down and take this constructive rest. Take three more breaths here, inhaling through the nose, either letting it out through the nose or through the mouth. And then you're slowly gonna open up the knees, walk your feet towards one another, lift your hips over towards the right, roll over onto the left. Feel free to give yourself a moment there and come up nice and slow into a comfortable seat. So coming to a comfortable seat means something different for a lot of people, uh, me included. So options are that you can take the legs out long if you'd like to. You can um, cross in Sukhasana pose. You can sit up in hero's pose if you prefer, which is sitting onto your heels like this, if that is workable. If you have a prop, you can use the prop underneath. So um, 
And you can also keep your knees bent. So see what's comfortable for you. If you do have some props, some pillows, or anything nearby, you can use blocks underneath or pillows for your knees. So lift the flesh away so you can feel those sitting bones, right? And it also kind of broadens your seat a little bit. And then just shimmy your hips a little side to side, let your shoulders be loose, and then circle around. Just imagining that you're maybe doing a little hula hoop, but you're just gliding the hips, take them in the other direction, circling around. Good. And then coming back to the center, check your shoulders and make sure you're not leaning forward or you're not kind of sinking back, right? And tilt your pelvis a few times, um, tilting the belly out and then tilting back and forth and maybe even taking one hand to the back, the palm resting on your back and then one hand to the belly when you do that, finding your neutral spine. Lastly, which I forgot to mention in the beginning, is you can sit up on a blanket or on a pillow and this sitting kind of towards the edge. So having your legs below um, your hips is actually a very nice option. So explore that. And then we're going to all reach the arms up over the top of the head. So as we're moving a little bit more um, energetically in some of our poses today, you can imagine that you have some resistance. And as you're lifting up, you're pressing in and then you're pressing down and away. And you feel really a lot of engagement from here all the way out through the fingers. But it is gentle yoga and maybe what you need today is just to imagine that your hands are floating through the air that this is most beneficial to you today so it's your choice using the inhalation to bring the arms up either way and the exhalation as they come down good and with this resistance or even floating, you know, you do this long enough and you can definitely feel your shoulders and some strength work going on. You're going to reach the palms together, come down through the heart space to the heart space, thumbs to the sternum, press the palms in and just feel a little engagement there. Rock the head side to side. Float the hands down, tuck the chin a little bit. And then just rotate the head side to side, not all the way around. You're just swaying, coming through the center, to the right, center, to the left. So you're keeping that integrity of your spine, but you're trying to find some softness and some ease in other places. We often, as we're focusing sometimes, especially when we're new to yoga or we've been away from yoga for a while, we forget, we get so focused on what we're supposed to be doing that we create tension somewhere else maybe you're clenching your toes or so just try to find some ease as you're swaying the head side to side and you're still breathing you're inhaling exhaling nice and then bring the head up we're going to switch the legs so take a moment to let the legs Come out in the front, maybe pay attention to which leg you had in the front. So you might want to remember, usually you can tell when you try to go back into that Sukhasana or easy pose. And then massage behind the legs. Use your fingertips to really press in so you can feel some heat being created. And then come up the front, down the back, stretch out the legs, and then just give your legs a little pat. Be gentle, don't go down the shins, go inside, outside of the shins. Good, back of the legs. Nice, all right, and then we'll cross the other direction. So, see if you can remember which leg and remember you can here, use your support if you need to. <clears throat> And find your comfortable seat. Look for flesh away, either to the sides or behind you. And then check in with that integrity of your spine. Feel a nice little broadening through the collarbone. 
Take a breath in through the nose, let it out through the mouth. And then we're gonna circle the arms up towards the ceiling. You're gonna let your left arm come down and then you're gonna take your right arm, swing it around towards the right knee and then open up to a circle. Take the opposite, you just lift up, opposite arm, swirl around back towards the left and then give it a big circle. Yeah, good. And then this time we're gonna take the right arm and you're gonna open up the arm, take it over towards the right knee or the right thigh and then open it up, maybe use your eye gaze to follow that hand, and then exhale down. I was really hoping to go outside today and do this outside, but it's really very windy and chilly, so another time. But if we were doing this outside, imagine that you could be looking up at a beautiful tree or the sky or the clouds. Take it one more time, inhale up. So it's kind of at an angle, it's not straight up in the air, and it's definitely not out and behind you. It's up at an angle, coming right out of your shoulder. And your fingertips are spread. And then relax that arm down, bring both hands to the sides, either fingertips to the ground, or you can relax your hands on your lap. And then just notice, maybe you feel a little more opening on this side. And we'll take it to the other side. So take the left arm up or your opposite, and then you're going to exhale and just reach. Try not to take your whole body with you. Just take the hand and the arm and then reach up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And inhale. Again, maybe noticing if you need to release some tension, if you need to uncross the legs or open up the legs, feel free to do that. Down. Inhale up. And last time, exhale down. Good, beautiful. Reach the arms up one more time and then flip them down, stretch through the fingertips, lift up the palms and then go back and forth. And if you want to, again, you can just let the hands kind of float. It might feel good on your wrists or if you want a little bit more strength work in the arms, then, oops, wrong way. <laughs> so you can see me better. You're just gonna flip palms up and down and imagine maybe that you have some resistance, right? And then we're gonna stay and you're gonna pulse. Reach out, 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 space in between your neck. So if your shoulders are up here, ouch, ouch, ouch. Reach, space in between the neck, uh, ears and the, sh and the uh, shoulders. Good, flip them up. Try not to lose your integrity of your spine and breathe. Good, bend at the elbows, soften the elbows down and bring your hands back to the center. You can undo the legs. You can take that support away if you would like or keep it there, it's fine too. And then again, a little massage of the legs. So use your fingertips. So if you just kind of gently do this, you're not really gonna feel the benefits. So you really wanna give yourself a little friction between the fingertips and the legs. And then another little tap down and up. And then slide the feet in and then these are going to go wide and you're just going to rotate side to side so you can stay with the knees and just see how it feels on your shoulder i mean on your hips as you just rock side to side or you can make it a little bit more energetic if you want to open up and take a little twist but check in with your hips and lower back and make sure that they're happy Try not to sink into your palms, so you can even use your fingertips, but imagine that you're keeping your chest open. Good. And then slowly bring the legs long, point your toes, slide back, point your toes and flex your feet. Point your toes, flex your feet, point your toes, flex your feet. Find your shoulders up here, let them go. Good. Bring the soles of the feet together in Baddha Konasana. So this can be a nice um, pose to also, a cobbler's pose, you can also sit up on something, blanket, towel, bolster if you have it at home. And then taking the soles of the feet together, it can be start here, hold underneath the thighs. Remember not to sink down, use that upper body to support you, your spine supporting you. 
Inhale through the nose, let it out through the mouth. Relax the shoulders, shake the head. You can continue to walk. Next option would be to walk the feet a little bit closer towards you. And you might feel a little more opening here in your um, inner thighs. You can also continue to walk the feet in. You can inhale, and then as you exhale, you can do a little forward fold. You don't want to feel this from your lower back, so you want to make sure that you're keeping that extension. You're rooting up with the head. You're rising down with the sitting bones, and you're just leading with the chest. Up and back. You can do that if that feels good to you. Take a few more wherever you are. You can stay and breathe wherever you are. If you'd like more support underneath of your knees to make it a little more restorative or possible, in some cases, sometimes this is really nice to have that support there or underneath the thighs. I highly recommend blocks and um, I think there's probably plenty of pillows around for you to find, but um, you can get them on Amazon or any yoga, if you just a yoga accessories or something like that. But if you're going to be trying to practice um, throughout this stage of our lives here, then it might be worth investing in. All right, so undo the legs again, straddle the legs out, open up the legs, and then bend the knees, hold underneath the thighs. Take an inhale, relax the shoulders, shake your head no, shake your head yes. You can stay right here and noticing the opening, or you can obviously stretch out the legs a little bit longer. Be mindful of your hamstrings, keeping the toes up towards the ceiling, and taking it that way. Or you can Keep your feet on the floor and knees here, and then just play around with the opening, and coming back up, and breathing, just feeling your adductors a little bit as you get a little straddle stretch there. Take a breath in through the nose, let it out through the mouth, and then you can release that pose, and we are going to come back or come over onto your hands and knees. So take your time. I'm on a carpeted floor with a cushy mat, so I don't need any extra support today, but typically I would use a blanket or a towel or um, something to support. This is a little thick, but if you have something um, that you know you want some support with your knees, I would go ahead and grab that now. But come to your hands and knees, and then once you're there, curl your toes, and then just shimmy back and forth a little bit. Try to relax the head, maybe round the back slightly. Feeling a stretch into your toes. If it's comfortable on your knees and your thighs, you can come with your heels <clears throat> and your hips together. So take your time with that. Oops, I'm gonna go this way. And check in with your hands and your wrists. So I have been um, liking this way of coming to my hands and that is to come to the fingertips and then start to slide the fingertips down in a way so then you're engaging down the finger into the mound of the fingers and then into the palm and then into the wrists so you're not just coming down right onto the wrists okay so try that again tent the fingers which means just coming to the finger pads it's the finger pad finger pad and then you're sliding so you're spreading and then you're coming onto your wrists. Open up your knees so that they're about hip width apart. Feet are directly behind you. And as you inhale, just notice that rise of the chest forward. Be keeping the neck neutral. Exhale and round. So this pose is different for everyone. But I want you to really feel it in the back body and also through the rib cage. So as opposed to thinking about the back, upper back, pushing up towards the ceiling. Think about as you inhale, the broadening of the back and the broadening through the rib cage, which you should feel when your breath gets to those places. So we're inhaling forward. Feel that expansion in the back and in the rib cage. Exhale. And you can also feel the expansion 
and you can feel the side rib cage. So take that a couple more times. If you close your eyes as you're moving into, we call this cat cow, then it becomes like a meditation. Move with the cue of your breath as opposed to your brain telling you it's time to rise, it's time to curl. So you feel the inhalation coming, your chest automatically will lift. It's going with that flow. Time. All right, coming back and then just let your hips sort of pendulum back and forth. Maybe push out a little bit to the right and then to the left, a little to the right, a little to the left. And then we're going to do something a little bit more energetic. So there's lots of options along the way and I will let you know. And we're going to stay on our hands and knees. So Options are to reach the leg back. Let's go ahead and do this together. Reach the leg back and then let the knee bend and then just do a little pulsing here so that you can feel a little hamstring stretch and a little into the Achilles behind the ankle. Take it on the other side. Just try not to sink into your wrists. Remember to set your hands so that you're using your whole hand and you're not feeling it. Lifting the energy up and away. You're not feeling it all in the wrist. And then bring your knee down. All right, so you can go back and forth here, stretching through the toes, and then uncurl the feet. Or you can curl those. That's one option. Or you can curl the toes, lift, and let your knees hover here. Okay, so we're just letting the knees hover. Again, if you're pressing forward, you're only feeling this into your wrists, then start again with your hands. One more time, and then think about engaging your lower ab mus abdominal muscles coming down. We're all going to take our hands, slide them to the side, and take a child's pose. If you have your um, blanket or pillow or something, you can quickly stick it there. Take the hands to the sides, and then inhale, move into puppy, slide the hands forward. Hips stay high in this pose. And then inhale, open up, exhale down. So you can take all of that or you can take a piece of that, okay? So I'm gonna take this away for now. We're gonna come back, tent the fingers, bring the hands down, shift the weight back. Make sure you're not shifting the weight too far forward. That's not good on the wrists. Curl the toes, play around with stretching through the toes, just come to tops of the feet, go back and forth, or you can in, engage in your core, push into the toes, and then hover, lift the upper back a little bit, breathe, you can play around with lifting one foot, just be really mindful of your quadricep, it's a lot on the quad there, and then come down, we're all going to slide back through child's pose. Take the hands to the sides. Inhale, exhale. Your next inhale, you're going to slide up. Come into your forearms. Come into puppy. Take an inhale. Come all the way up. Exhale, hands down. We're going to try it one more time. And then you also have the option of going up into your downward facing dog with bent knees if you would like to. So when we get to our hovering here, you can push into your downward facing dog, but keep a big bend into the knees, right? And I can't see you, so you can always cheat and go all the way back if you want to, but <laughs> all right, let's try one more time. You can always come to the forearms as well in some of this hovering. You can try that a little bit different, and it might be too much on the shoulders to do that on your forearms. You could try it on your wrists. Shifting the weight, playing around with shifting the weight. All right, you might already be there, but let's go. So hover, knees are about hip width apart, pull into the core. Don't want all the weight on your wrist. Shift back maybe a little bit. Really press into the toes. Exhale, you can come into your downward facing dog. Keep the knees bent. Down, take the weight off the wrist. Slowly slide back. If you need that support, tuck it under. Come into your child's. 
Take an inhale, slide the hands forward, coming into puppy. You can stay here, or you can keep going into the shoulder stretch too. Inhale, pulling your way back up, remove the support. Inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, take the hands down. Nice job. Nice job. All right. So let's work a little bit on letting go of the wrists now. So you can take your hands out into the front. Make a little fist. Let your fingers go. And then you're going to roll the wrists in towards each other. You're going to come down slowly. And you're coming down onto this fleshy part right here where the thumb and the first finger is. And then, and you're keeping your arms at an angle. You do not want to go forward putting the weight on your wrist. Open up the fingers. And explore there. You should feel like a really nice stretch through your forearm and also into the wrist. Be gentle. Remember, there's no pressure. There's no pushing down. You're back here. Okay. Good. And then release. Oh, good job. Okay, let's get a little tiny bit into the hips. So you can come onto your forearms here since we were on our wrists for a bit. Stretch back and pul pulse a little bit. And then you're going to lift up the leg. You don't have to keep the leg at hip level. You can lift it up as high as you want to here. Just make sure that it stays forward. Point and flex. Pull the belly up and in. Switch to the other side. Reach back. Lift the leg. You can point and flex. Roll the ankle. Bend the knee. Whatever. Play around. Good. And then we're actually going to take extended child's pose to um, stretch out the hips a little bit. So you can use your support again here if you'd like. It's a very good option. Tuck it in, knees are wide. You can stay on your forearms here. You can wiggle side to side, or you can take your hands, pull them out front, stretch, and then release the elbows closer to you to relax your forehead down. Sometimes I use my, lately I've been using my eye pillow to put underneath my forehead. So you might want to try that. Let's get this hair out of my face. So here, and you can kind of double it up as well. And if you're enjoying that pose, you can stay where you are. You can also walk the hands over towards the left. Keep your right um, uh, hip grounded. Try not to let it come with you off the ground. Stay in here. You can take one palm on top of the other as well. Take a breath there. Inhale and exhale. Slowly walk the hands back to the center. Come to the center first. Big breath in, exhale out, and start to walk your hands over to the other side, to the right side. Explore and play. If it's too much on the hips, feel free to come up and stretch the legs behind you back and forth. That might feel like a better option. Good, and then we're going to inhale, come over off of the hands and knees, and we're gonna come up to standing. So make your way up to standing nice and slow, and find some space. I'm gonna move my mat back and adjust so that you can see me a little bit more. Once you're there, maybe just pedal your feet. Just kind of a little dancing around. Let's try that, okay. Everybody doing all right out there? <laughs> Good. Maybe find your Tadasana. Your 
soles of your feet together or your feet about hip width apart. Let's get this back. Let's try that. All right. Reach your arms up over the top of the head. Exhale, take the hands down. Again, inhale up. Feel a nice rooting down sensation with your feet. And knowing that the energy is rising up through the crown of the head as well. So you're rooting down and you're rising up. So you have that nice engagement of all of the body. Exhale. Widen your feet a little bit more, a little softness into the knees. And then you're just going to swing the arms a little side to side. So you can just gently swing the arms or you can get your <clears throat> hips a little more into it, lifting up onto, lifting up the heel in the op of the leg in the opposite direction that you go. You can then also play around with the hand reaching towards the shoulder. Just a slight, nice little tap. And then you can bend the knees and you can make it a little bit more energetic. Imagine that there's, you're not controlling your arms, you're just letting them swing around. This with them tapping the lower back and the belly, this option fires up your, gives some new circulation to your internal organs, right? So either way, just kind of notice this new orientation of standing. It is almost noon, so if you do have to go, um, maybe this is your time where you turn the volume off or you shut down the computer and then you lay down on your mat and you take, if you have five minutes, 10 minutes, just to listen to the breath, close the eyes, and just to let the all the movements and all the breath um, restore inside of you so that you have that energy for later. And I'm going to say namaste if you are heading out. Otherwise, we're going to carry on a little bit more standing and then move back down. And I will um, try to end at 12.15. All right. Okay, so then just shimmy the hips a little side to side. So let's go back to that balance where we were using lifting one. So in this case, you're going to hold the hands over the top of the head. For some reason, I'm not able to show you my hands. And imagine that you're holding onto maybe like a beach ball. And then you can pretend that you are swaying back and forth, holding onto that beach ball. So these beach balls are really, really light. So you really have to spread your fingers and hold the whole thing. And then play around with your balance. You can hold and stay there, or you can sway just letting one toe off the ground. So keep going back and forth, playing around with that. If the arm, you're not feeling the arms, then just let the arms come down to the sides. Or maybe you take the hands into Anjali Mudra, relaxing the shoulders. Yeah. And if you want to continue to play, keep playing. If you want to turn into a little dance, I'd love to see it. I wish I could see it, but I can't. All right, and once you've done both sides, come back to the center, bring your feet in towards one another, and then pedal the feet, pedal the feet. Imagine that you're bicycling, you're pushing down the pedal with the right leg and foot, and then the left, yeah. Yeah, and really feel this through your legs. It should feel nice through the legs. So you hold, you're sort of stopping at the tip onto your toes, and then down to the heel. Relax the shoulders, try not to look down. Keep your eye gaze forward. If you want to play around with the arms, you can do that too. If you want to rub the belly at the same time that you're bicycling, do that too. Good. And then relax. Close your eyes. Take your Tadasana. Arms are to the sides. Maybe floating the palms open. Open up through the elbows and kind of give some space. And then bring the arms down. A little lift to the chin. Just keeping the chin parallel with the ground. And notice any physical sensations. Where are you at this moment? What are you feeling at this moment? It was such a beautiful practice in being in the moment, letting the busyness of our minds set aside, bringing attention to our physical body, Creating more ease, more space, 
love this saying by Matthew Sanford, a yoga teacher who's actually a paraplegic, and he says, breathe for the spaces that you can't yet feel. Right, so all those, for us, maybe those places where we're holding tension and anxiety, we can just soften through those places, even if it's just that short time you spend on your mat. Should your body subtly can feel it and thank you for it. All right, and then we're gonna try tree pose for a little balance here. And move back or switch my computer so you can see more of my feet. But maybe visualize right now, visualize a species of tree that you would like to express at this moment. Maybe you've seen a beautiful tulip tree, a dogwood tree. Maybe it's a tree with little buds that haven't actually flowered yet. So you're going to take your hands to the sides and relax. You're going to bend into the right knee, and then you're just going to rotate that knee out to the side, wherever that means for you. You don't want to start to turn your whole body, and you don't want to create any tension in your hip. And bringing, I think you can see my feet, just bringing your ankle, your left ankle, and the arch in towards one another. And maybe lifting up, feeling the energy through the foot and the leg. This You're going to shift the weight onto this left leg, so you want to energetically be aware of this leg. Don't lock up the knee. And then pull the energy so it goes through. It's rising. The crown of the head is rising up as you're rooting down with this left foot. If it feels more comfortable for you to come up to the shin, you can do that, or the calf. Excuse me, the calf. And... Um, just make sure that you don't go on the knee, okay? If you can get the foot above the knee into the thigh, feel free to do that. Check and make sure that you're not bumping out to the side, that you're pressing that inner thigh or that calf in towards the foot as you root down with that straight leg and rising up. We connect everything, all of our parts together. We become more supported and it becomes more effortless. And then just visualize. You don't have to close your eyes. That's pretty tricky. You can just visualize. Keep your drishti. Maybe you're looking out a window. Maybe you are looking at a wall or a painting or a kitchen cabinet. Just find the drishti, a point of focus to stay and breathe for three more deep breaths. Inhaling, softening in your exhalation somewhere so we have strength. And we have ease in the pose. That's what we're always trying to balance. And then slowly letting that foot come to the ground, gently stepping in place. If you want to step out further, shake the hips or circle the knees, feel free. And then notice on your mat, maybe I have this very distinct footprint on that left side. So you're going to shift the weight now onto the right leg, the toes, the heel. Use your whole foot. Use the whole leg. Use the energy rooting down and the energy rising up. Think of a species of tree. This is a different side. We have a different shape on this side, even if it's very subtle. It may be more dramatic. It may be subtle. So once you've found your visualization, visual you know what I mean, <laughs> your visual of your tree. Maybe take your hands to the hips and then start to take that knee out to the side. And then starting here, making sure you're not pressing on the ankle. I've got my arch supported. My hips are staying. An alignment to support me. Again, if you want to slide up to the calf, feel free, or if you want to slide all the way up to the thigh, making sure that that works for you. All right, so I think I've been practicing for about 18 years, definitely started here. Maybe about five years was here, maybe 10 years up here. It took me a long time and a lot of practice to get into that shape, into that tree. Let the yoga meet you where you are. 
Breathing, finding that drishti. Staying where you are, inhaling, finding some ease in the pose. Exhale and start to bring that knee rack around to the center. Pedal out the feet. Do whatever it is that feels good to you. It might be taking some hip swirls so that you can release in the lower back a little bit. Take your time. And then we're going to walk our feet out, toes facing out. Slide your hands down your thighs. Take your right shoulder towards the left. Inhale through the center. Switch to the other side. This should feel really nice on your back like a little twist, but make sure that you're supporting yourself here, that you're not taking your whole torso and swinging so much. You're just intentionally lifting up as you come through the center. Little twist to the right, little twist to the left. So take a couple more if you need to, and then we're gonna make our way back onto the mat. So whenever you're ready, come back down. And again, we'll take another energetic, little energetic addition to our gentle practice. If you have a block, you might wanna try the block here. Um, uh, trying to think of, if you have a little towel, you can roll, um, roll it up. It's not a must. And then we're gonna take a little play around with a little boat pose. So you're coming down, feeling your sitting bones are rooting down. I'll move a little bit closer now. Better. All right, so we call this Navasana pose, and you're gonna hold underneath the thighs. Think about your, your neutral spine staying tall. You're not sinking down here, only focusing on the legs. You wanna keep shoulders broadened through that collarbone. Feel that really nice opening through the chest, staying here, and just noticing that, seeing if you can find some ease there without too much over effort. Hold underneath the thighs, walk your feet a little bit closer, and then just play around maybe with lifting one foot at a time, and eventually maybe lifting both and kind of balancing here, right? So you're balancing on these sitting bones. Relax the shoulders as much as you can, making sure you have space uh, through the neck, and you can rock back and forth. You can let the feet land, or a toe land. Eventually, if you want to come back even more, if you lean back, don't let your belly sink in. Keep that nice lift, that broad, broad through the back. Feel the, when you breathe, feel that broadness through the back. Right about at your bra line there. And then you can continue to play with the legs coming more at 45 degrees if you would like to. Again, holding on the thighs, keeping that lift and engaging those inner abs. If you feel this in your lower back, hold the legs and you can play around with letting them go. But if you feel this at all in your lower back, do not let go of the legs. If you can engage the core and you feel your core and you want to explore, you can here. Again, don't sacrifice your lower back. Keep lifting up, keep engaging into the core. Otherwise, hold and play around with the balance. Nice job. You can let the legs come out and we'll find our way back onto our back. So take your time. Feel free to say, ah, coming down onto your back and then take that constructive rest pose again. So in constructive rest, your feet are towards the outer edges of the uh, mat. And you can determine how far in. Usually your feet are a little bit more further away than they would be in bridge pose. And then just let the knees fall towards one another. Relax the shoulders. Maybe hands come onto the belly. If you need a little support under your head, grab that towel or that blanket and just tuck it underneath. And then just stay here. And again, checking in and noticing how it feels. How, uh, what physical sensations are drawing your attention? Or lack of intention, of uh, attention. You just feel blissful. And 
and then drawing the knees away from one another. You can draw the knees in towards the chest. And then some other options here are, there might be something that you really want to do at this point that you have a regular practice. Go ahead and do that. And then otherwise you have the option of either circling the knees around, inhaling and exhaling, let your shoulders relax, take it in the opposite direction. It's a little kind of a nice massage for the back or flipping the feet up towards the ceiling, hold underneath the thighs, widen and rock side to side. And think about being like a rag doll head soft again this can be a nice massage for the back as well the knees are in too close you might be rounding into the spine make sure that the knees are far enough away so that you're on a comfortable more fleshy part of the back let the legs float up towards the ceiling you can hold here with your hands but just bend enough into the knees and let your lower back be nice and heavy your back will feel more flat here um, because of the weight of your legs and maybe a little more grounding. Let the arms come to the sides. Just notice the circulation moving in a different direction here. And then we'll slowly start to make our way into Shavasana. So again, if there's something else that you'd like to do, if you want to rock a roll a little into a twist or something else, feel free to do that. Otherwise, use the support underneath your head if you have that towel or blanket, if you'd like to do that. Again, you can use your bolster or your pillow if you want to support the legs. Again, sometimes you can turn it on its side too. So this is just a nice way to help support the legs and then you'll find that your lower back is happier in its neutral spine here. Put the arms to the sides, let the feet just float away from each other. And once you're comfortable, close your eyes. And take a moment just to notice any physical sensations. And let your natural breathing rhythm happen, no effort, complete ease. Certainly if you have an eye pillow, feel free to, or a piece of clothing you can just drape over your eyes. Take a breath in through the nose, let it out through the mouth. And then just pause. Welcome yourself again to the mat. Let your body land on the earth so that you feel supported. Let the breath move freely. Allowing the softness of your face, just letting the skin kind of drape off the bone. Feeling a softness in your throat. Shoulders. Think about the space behind your heart as the breath moves. That space becomes more open, broad, relaxed. Softening through your belly, the thighs, the kneecaps front of the shins, all the way into the feet and the toes. It's 
surrendering with each breath. Letting yourself flow with the universe. One breath at a time. Slowly bring your awareness back by just a little movement, maybe rocking the head side to side or wiggling your fingers. Noticing your breath. Maybe more aware of feeling more spacious, feeling, feeling softer. The flow is often a matter of relinquishing the notion that we are that we need to be in control at all times. The flow is always transporting you where you need to go. It is merely a question of deciding whether you plan on accepting the ride or having it take you where you take you there with your feet dragging. Learning to step into it can help you feel connection to a force that is greater than you and always there to support you. The decision to go with the flow takes courage because you are surrendering the belief that you need to do everything by yourself. As a child, you were naturally swept by the flow. Tears of sadness falling on your face could just as quickly turn to tears of laughter. The mere tiniest wave carrying you forward off the shores of the ocean could transport you into peals of delight. Our souls feel good when we go with the flow of the universe. All we have to do is make the choice to ride its currents. Maybe taking this an inhale, reaching the arms up over the top of the head, draw your knees in towards the chest, and slowly rolling, finding your way to one side. Stay there for a moment. Maybe placing the hand on the heart. <clears throat> The other hand on top and just take a moment to reflect on something that you're grateful for. A little extra gratitude for your body and all that it's doing to keep you alive at this moment. And certainly some gratitude for yourself, for taking care of yourself and finding ways to stay connected and supported. You can make your way up to a comfortable seat, take your time. And we'll all take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Exhale, bringing the hands down to heart center. Relax the shoulders. We'll take one ohm to seal and celebrate practicing as a community, even though we can't see each other. Certainly we can feel each other's energy and lightness. Take a breath in through the nose. Let it out through the mouth. We'll take one ohm. Feel free to join in or just listen to the universal sound that we all, vibration that we all have. Inhale through the nose again. Exhale through the mouth. And inhale to ohm. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me, helping me feel more supported and connected by engaging and sharing and leading you in a yoga practice. Thank you for your time. And thank you again to Ease for offering these free Facebook Live classes. You can go to the YouTube channel if you wanna see it later, uh, Ease Yoga and Cafe. Thank you so much if you have any comments or um, questions, if there's something specific that you would like. Um, I might do something with um, just some short meditation, a couple of meditations. I would love to hear from you. So have a beautiful day. Namaste.
I think some people joined that I didn't wasn't able to see in the beginning. So thank you for coming again. Holly, Martha, Benedict, Dana, Gretchen, and Elizabeth, yay, Tara, Sue, my mama, Anne, so great, Michelle. Have a beautiful day, all of you. Thank you so much. I hope you were feeling better and more engaged and um, inspired. So go share it. Bye.